Hello, welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 253. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. And I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. It is Monday, May 25th, 2015, Memorial Day here in the States. Yep. Laura and I both put off recording yesterday because we could. And, and we knew we were off today. Yeah. So it worked out. Yeah. I um, sat down earlier about noon after I had done a couple loads of laundry to read, and then I woke up two hours later. <laughs> so That's a good enough yesterday. So. Days off are awesome. They are. I agree. Soon all the days will be days off. That's true. That's going to be so awesome. So why don't you tell us about all the knitting that you're doing this week? All the knitting that I'm doing. Well, Stash Dash officially started, so I did finish some things. Finally! Yay! But, um, I'm going to move my, there we go. Um, let's see, what do I have in progress? So I have the Milo, still in progress. It is on the bottom border, so I have like four more rows. Which oh, that's get... super cute. So, oh, you can't see that cable at all. I decided to do the one big cable. Mm-hmm. And it is wee and tiny. It is out of um, a DK weight yarn from Neely's Knits in the Anna colorway. There we go. There you can see it a little bit better. But it's really, really pretty. I like how it's speckly. Like, there's no pooling at all, yeah. really. So it worked out really, really nice. It's a nice base to work with, too. It almost feels like a luxury base, but it's not. It's just a super wash merino. But it's really soft. So I'm excited to almost be done with that. And I'm going to have a bit, a decent amount left over. Not a big amount, but a decent amount. And now my, uh, all the bags are open. <laughs> so I have that much left over. So it's going well. Um, that is being knit on size 5 needles. And it's just, it's a great pattern. I think she's updating it to, um, so this is a, this is like a four, maybe an eight ply pattern. And she's adding like a fingering weight size, I think, and a worsted weight size as well. That's the word on the street. Mm -hmm. I might not be accurate, but she's adding different things and she's adding lace panels to it and stuff. So I'll be excited to see what she comes up with. But it's a nice basic pattern. And if you want some inspiration, there is a Milo and May thread on the Tiki Knits board that's got some really awesome stuff. Like there's a Batman one. There's this one that's got like a honeycomb cable and then mm -hmm. they embroidered bees on it. It's yeah. amazing. Super cute. So lots of inspiration in that thread. And then I've just been working on all the socks. So all my socks were at like weird, crazy points. So I kept casting on more. Because that's what you do. <laughs> so the last ones that I cast on, which are just at the toe, are um, the Two Sisters Yarn Company. And it's got that wee bit of blue at the toe, and it's going into a gold. <laughs> I know, it's nothing. Did you cast that on like 10 minutes ago? <laughs> Shut up. Maybe. I did wind the yarn yesterday. I did a bad job of winding the yarn, too. It's like, I need to rewind it. Um, I am a poor yarn winder today. You need to have somebody like... Jasmine recruits her husband to do all of her winding. I think her mom does too. I just, I was going, well, okay, so I got a Fitbit. Mama Linneman bought me a Fitbit. <laughs> like the cheap one. And it's not even on me right now. Oh, this is why I have no steps. It's a, I, I leave Sorry. mine on my nightstand half the time. And so, like, I was walking in place while I was winding this because I was, like, almost at 4,000 steps <laughs> yesterday, which tells you how extremely lazy I was yesterday. That's 4,000 steps with mowing the lawn. Oh. So, super lazy yesterday. I was just sitting and knitting, and, um, like, I was like, oh, I was almost at 4,000. I was like, man, I got to get those last 200 steps in to hit 4,000. Like, it matters. Like, it's a competition <laughs> with itself. <laughs> and really, it's because... uh. Our friend Jessica, she's on there, so I, I'm linked to her as a friend. I don't know why it didn't link me to you. You must not be on I may ex. not be on Jessica's friends because I don't want to be showed up every single day. <laughs> so her dad's on there, and she always talks about how her dad's, like, doesn't have a lot of steps all the time. And I was like, he averages 4,000. I was like, man, i got to get more than <laughs> Jessica's dad. <laughs> so it's ridiculous. I've had it for a whole day, so we'll see how long this And I'm not even wearing it. So we'll see how long this lasts. Anyways, uh, did I even show you this yarn or did I just like rewind no. it? No. Okay, so this is the Outlander colorway. 
Is that the Two Sisters? Yes, this is one of the ones I got from Two Sisters Yarn Company. So it's got this cool, like, navy blue, um, a gold in it, like a lime green, and a red. And it's really, really... And there's actually, like, two shades of gray, uh, blue. There's, like, a grayish navy and then a darker navy. But it's really, really pretty. And I wanted to start working on it. And my other socks are in, like... One's almost done and one's in a weird spot. So, okay. So, other socks. So, that's the first pair of socks that just got started. The other pair of socks that's on my needles is um, Lollipop Yarns. And all these are on size 1, 2.25 needles. The um, Outlanders are on the Skissel Sock Rockets, Eddie Sock Rockets. These ones are on Carbons. And this is Lollipop Yarns in the Beach Baby colorway, which is really pretty. And I'm going to do a Fish Lips Kiss heel on this, and it's at that point. So I just need to do the heel. Yeah. But I need to sit. I've only knit that heel once, so I need to sit down and actually knit it. You were in a car. You were. I was with you. Passenger. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and Leslie was like telling me the pattern aloud because she knows it. She's got it memorized. So, um, and I own a copy, but I think I was asking her questions about it. But anyway, um, so this will be those, and that's in another fat squirrel bag. I got all these fat squirrel bags at SSK last year. These two. It's the lightning. Yeah, I like the lightning bug one. I do too, and it matches. Look, it matches so perfect. Oh, it does. I'm such a dork. But anyway, that so that's no longer person knitting because it needs a heel. And actually, I got irritated with myself because I took it to Alicia's house Thursday night, and I, then I didn't have much knitting to do on it. And then the last pair of socks I have on the needles, which are about to come off. The first one is about to be done. I'll have to cast on the second one is the um, Stry Toe-Up Socks by Laura Neal out of some hand spun that Jessica spun for me, that shimmy your knits. And they're, they're like ribbed, aren't they? Uh, it's, it's just hard to rib. tell. Okay. It's a broken rib. So can you see that? Yes. Yeah. And when you mess it up, then it becomes a broken... <laughs> broken, broken rib. <laughs> a broken seed stitch. <laughs> oh well yeah i was totally not going back to fix that. that's like gonna be in the heel of my foot it's, it's a feature be... not a bug whatever um <laughs> there's our pretty... title that's very cody of you anyway so it's got this cool heel that's got slip stitch um so it works out really well and i'm gonna make them around four inches well no i'll probably do like six inches tall and they're probably at like two. I was knitting on these as I was watching Galavant last night. <laughs> you say that like there's a private joke in there. No, have you seen that show? No. Oh, so this is a musical. That explains it. <laughs> that ABC puts on and it's got um, the... Did you ever watch Psych? I've watched two episodes of Psych. Okay, so Lassiter from Psych is like this evil king... And it's very, like, medieval, but it's a musical. It reminds me of, like, the cheesiness of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer mm. musical episode. Like, it's very funny. Yeah. <laughs> it makes Even thinking about it makes me giggle. Huh. But here's the rest of these. I highly suggest you try. It's They're only 30-minute episodes. Hmm. And I laugh at least four times an episode. <laughs> There's only eight episodes. I watched the first four last night. <laughs> As I was sitting on these socks. But yes, they're fine. And it got renewed. I have no idea how it got renewed. <laughs> well, if it's that funny, I guess. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. But it's very funny and there's good eye candy. But anyway, um, and that is living in, that's on some sock rockets. No, I don't know what these are. They've got a blue cord, but it's not the clear blue cord. I don't know. These might be high, high sharps. Could be. I think they are. So high, high sharps in um, a bling your string bag. Ooh, and now and that's a uh, hand spun from Jess, right? Yep, I already said that. And okay. it's in my Christmas bag because I started these in Christmas time. <laughs> I love this bag. So uh, this is a bling your string bag, but and it's a little bit larger than I probably need for these socks. But she's it's like six hundred yards is what she spun me. So I have lots of lots of stuff. Um, you got six hundred yards. I got three hundred and eighteen yards. I just want to put that out there. Whatever. Jess. Um, Moon River comes in five ounce. I know. No. Yeah, five ounce braids. Yeah. That's why. For her sock club. 
So, um, and I'm more special than you. Well, there's that. Mm, always. So, uh, I think that's it for me for works in progress. It totally is. But did I say that the Stry toe-ups are by Laura Neal? You did. Okay. That's all I got. So, four items, three of which are socks in all different states of things. Ridiculousness. Well, I only have two things that I'm actively working on. Um, this because you're amazing. With two things? Yes. No. Just because I've had other things I've been doing this week. Um, some people decided to edit my different properties that I work for a casino company so I have different properties and some people decided to put some protected data into places it didn't belong like credit card oh. data in places it didn't belong so I spent this week putting out fires mostly and then I didn't feel like knitting so the first thing I'm knitting is um, a, it's a sock blank from Knitting in Color yeah. and I'm knitting the bootstrap socks by Laura Neal and they have a little garter strip oh that's hard to see there i'll do it in a there you oh, go there we go that joins okay. under the heel yeah i haven't really knit on them except maybe an inch since last week um but i do like the sparkle in there i like how it great it's gradiating yeah too. um these will be for me probably good because i want to try and see how this heel lasts um and how it feels so there's that. These are on my diecraft um, heavy metal needles. Uh, so they're interchangeables. These are size 2.25 millimeters. Um, they make purple interchangeable. They do. Yeah, I got these maybe a year ago. So they're still the silver kind. But they make purple too. I'm just saying that they're purple. Just put that out there. I'm putting it out into the universe. And the other thing is in my bags by Awesome Granny bag. The these aren't in any bag; they're just sitting on my desk. But this is in my bags by Awesome Granny, and it's getting heavy. Oh, partly because it's my tablet in there. <laughs> That'll <laughs> add some weight to this. I'm knitting a custom fit sweater, and I'm using William Morris uh, colorway of Madeline Tosh Sport. Yeah. And I finished the back. It's curling a lot because it's just stocking it. Yeah. But it'll be seamed, so then it won't curl. Uh, I finished the back Great. last night while watching a really terrible movie on Amazon with Kobe. What was it? I don't know. It was some animated thing about wolves. Oh. Alpha was and Omega or something like that where they <laughs> over-sexualized the girl wolves and it just made me crazy. But anyway... Um, so I finished the back of the piece, which is where the bulk is, or it's the biggest part because the front will have a V-neck. Okay. And then I started, I'm in the middle of a row, started the front, and I'm only maybe four inches in on the front. I'm using Chowgu interchangeable needles. These are 3.75 millimeter, so... Okay. They're the metal, right? They're metal, because yes. You only do the metal. Yeah, I don't use wood. There's nothing wrong with it. I just don't like using wood. Snicker, snicker. <laughs> and this is all that I have right now left. So I'll have to finish. I'm alternating every other row. And as soon as I finish these two, I'll have to wind some more. And I, don't, I hate winding yarn. So if I trusted my 12-year-old to do it for me without making a bigger mess... And therefore making it more of a pain than I would. I bet you if you paid him to do it correctly, like a dollar. He doesn't he care about money. He really doesn't. Really? No, nope, not yet. 12-year-old's oh, money. Yeah, not yet. I'm hoping he gets to that point because then it'll be a lot easier for him to do stuff. But as of right now, he's just not interested. Hmm. But anyway, those are my works in progress. I don't have a ton, but it's a little bit. But Laura has some FOs. I do. I have two FOs. So the first isn't here. I finished The Hero Petite by Julia Farewell Clay. There is a project page up on Ravelry for it. So you can see pictures there. Um, it was interesting. It's an interesting... I have never done color work flat before. So that was interesting. And um, I, tr I learned how to continental pearl and then decided to go with a Portuguese pearl for one hand and um and portuguese pearl um traditionally you have like a little pin and the yarn is 
threaded through the pin. Mm -hmm. And that's how it's tensioned. But um, I typically tension it around my neck and then I wrap it around my forearm once. Um, and that tensions it for me pretty well. Um, and then I can just go like that if I need more yarn. <laughs> I don't know. I like that. I don't know if you could see that motion or not. Um, so, and then I was throwing with my right hand. So that worked out okay. My tension wasn't quite what I want it to be, but it wasn't terrible. Um, and it blocked fine. Uh, then there were a new way of doing short rows I learned, with which was the yarn over method. I never used that hmm. before. I don't think I have either. So instead of doing a wrap and turn, you um, knit to the last, last stitch, and then you turn it, and then you yarn over. And then you go back. And later, it's kind of like the Japanese method, except you're not putting on pins. And later, those yarn overs get knit together to fill in that How gap. How did it look when you were done? It looked fine. I couldn't see where they were, hmm. so... It was all good. Um, so that was interesting. And it was only like three rows. Yeah. Four rows. Um, so <laughs> not terrible. Uh, yeah, it was an interesting experience. So overall, it came, it turned out really well. And I hope that Julia really likes it. I was getting a little bit cause <laughs> Friday afternoon. So it had to be shipped Saturday. And Friday afternoon, I was still working on... Um, Part of it, oh, the button band, because I kept making stupid mistakes. So I'd be like, oh, you know, it's time to do the short rows. Well, I was supposed to decrease before I did the short rows, uh -huh. and I totally skipped that. So then I ripped it back and redid it, and uh, I messed up the color work a couple times, like by just random. And the cart, the chart is very clear, but it's like, oh, I'm gonna decide that that box with the X in it instead of being contrast color three is gonna be contrast color one this time. So I had to go back and fix that. It was tired mistakes. Yeah. So, um, got all that fixed and got it done and sewed on sparkly pink buttons from Joanne's. Aww. And I sent it off with, um, I sewed them on with embroidery floss. So I sent a card with the extra button because it used five. And, um, which I should have. So I lengthened mods that I made on the project is I lengthened the sleeves by an inch and I lengthened the body by an inch because Julie is pretty tall. Mm hmm. And I did the eight-year-old size, so I wanted to fit her a little bit longer. Because um, she won't wear it till the winter, because it's a long sleeve. Mm -hmm. work sweater. Um, so I should have added extra buttonholes. I went with the five that the pattern stated, and I should have done six or seven buttons instead. So they're a little bit far apart, but she probably won't button it anyway. Yeah, well, probably not. Especially not all the way. I would imagine if she does, it'll just be a couple. Yep, so... Overall, I really, really liked it. I think it turned out really well. Other things that I finished, I finished, and both these count for stash dash because I finished them on Friday. I finished the beanie. We won't get to see one row of progress every week on this. <laughs> no. And I made a pom pom. And you made a pom pom. Because pom poms count towards stash dash. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and I used the big blue pom pom maker from Clover. The pom poms like. I don't know. It's not my most favorite thing in the world, but, and I need to see, this is the problem with pom-poms. Because you fuss with them all the time? I fuss with them, and then I want to trim them so that they're perfect, which is so unlike me, because I really, perfection is not my forte. <laughs> but on this, I do, and there would be a pom-pom like that thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I've got to let it go. And then when I sewed it on, I, like, pulled it really tight, and I thought I was fancy and perfect, and I flipped it back to the other side to see it, and it was, like, hanging off by, like, a thread. <laughs> crap. So I had to fix it. But, um, it's done. You won't be able to see it one row of progress on this every week. I only, I almost, I did run out of the yellow. So I, there's no almost about it. I had to, um, skip the non- decrease rounds that just knit around in between mm -hmm. the decreases for like four rows so um but that just really affected the amount of slouch it's not going to affect the fit right no i really just wanted to make you put on the hat well it's going over <laughs> so it's not and there's pictures on you look like charlie have... brown i think oh <laughs> Is it because I'm wearing headphones and my hair is on? <laughs> no. Be. Isn't Charlie Brown the one that wears that? Or there's somewhere, somebody in his comic strip wears that, a hat like that. Maybe. I don't know. I'm making things up. 
so that's done. So those are my two FOs, and I'm at, I don't know, I did stash dash. Let's see how many yards I'm at. Because it's all about me and my yards for stash dash. It's actually meters, not yards. I did the first post on the first page. So I'm easy to find. So the hero petite used 667.8 meters. And then the hat used 227.2 meters. So I'm at 895 meters right now. I'm at a big fat nothing. That's okay. It irritates me though because I posted the same like finish line thread. So Ravelry is yelling at me like, "See the community guidelines? You're posting too much of the same." And then I tried to like go back and edit it and fix it so it wouldn't be yelling at me. It doesn't matter. It's like it's still the same. The algorithm is intelligent enough to know that you're trying to fake it out. But. Anyway. And now all the stash dash threads. I've got my main tab set to big um, forum, so it shows 10 posts from every group, uh -huh. or 10 threads from every group. Yeah. And all I see are stash dash posts. I'm like, oh! Because it should be. <laughs> I even thought this year, maybe we should create a separate group for stash dash, but then it would oh. like be divisive, and I didn't want that. So. No, I like it in our group, because it's a good way to see people posting people who don't usually post post and we're up over a thousand posts in the chatter thread which is totally off topic and um of those thousand like a hundred of them are mine <laughs> but then there's 509 different voices which i love so there's a lot of, and i'm sure there's people who haven't posted yet yeah i'm sure there's people who will never post in the chatter thread just the fo thread the finish line thread which is perfectly fine but we'll um we did a contest last week where we pulled five names and we'll do another one next week for prizes of the cheddar thread so and there's people posting some gorgeous stuff in there it's definitely worth checking out and very inspirational so we're inspiring but uh that's all i got for fos well i have a little bit for spinning um okay. i really want to, my entire dining room is like overtaken by fleece stuff and it's driving like a little bit crazy, which I totally understand. Like my drum carter takes up a quarter of the table, and then I've got bags and bags of fleece that some are washed, some are not washed, some have been carted, some are, you know, bats and all this. So I've been sort of making it a goal to try to get that to where it's all in the same state, and then I can put it away somewhere mm -hmm. um, or spin it, ideally. So I spent this week washing everything that was left which was mostly the BFL yeah, and a little bit of the Coopworth. So I'm totally, all my fleeces are clean, at least, washed. Um, <laughs> the BFL is still super dirty, uh, full of grass and VM and stuff. So I'm still trying to think of a way to get that out without having to hand touch every piece. Because if I have to do that, I'm just going to get rid of it. I can't deal with that. It'll come out in the carter. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. I, for now, I just put it aside. It's been washed, so now it's in a bag, so it's been put aside. Um, I've started carding and picking. I picked all of the Coopworth this weekend, which is part of the reason I'm sunburned, because I'm an idiot, and even under the shade outside, under my patio umbrella, it's still, I still got burned. Um, so all that got washed, and I'm carding the Merino Cross. I'm trying to do like two or three bats a day. And, uh, go you. Then I'll go. I can't do that for a long time. It makes me crazy. What, so carding? Yeah. Like, if I try to carve for more than an what, hour. Picking Nelson? No. Hmm, interesting. Really. Um, so, anyway, there's that. Um, I have carded a few bats, but it's not different from what I showed you last week. It's still the same merino cross fiber. Um, and I try to keep if i'm carding something i try to finish all of it before i move on to the next thing that's what be i do just because keep yeah you don't have to clean it as often and get every single fiber off the drum card or whatever so there's that and then i got my moon rover superwash ooh, fiber ooh, club ooh. Yeah. for the month she doesn't i guess she doesn't name the colors in the fiber club because it doesn't have a colorway name no i don't think she does um it's just a superwash merino and nylon blend and that packet's lavender yeah it's got a it's a sachet so you can put it in with your um, knits so i got it and i really loved it so i immediately 
Um, I want to so see. Ooh, it's sweaty. got red. Yeah, it's got like every color. Ooh, pretty. So this, these are. She does five ounces for her club shipments. So I don't know. Maybe she does that for every braid. I don't know. It's just the club. Okay. So these are. It's I split it into three. So this is braid number two and braid number three, and this was braid number one. So it had some orange and like sort of sea foamish blue colors in it. Uh huh. Uh, so I spun a third of it, I don't remember, a few days ago, and then I was going to start spinning another third of it today, but then I realized that we needed to record, so I'll start on it later on, but oh. I, I really like the, the all the colors in it, so. So you're going to three-ply I'm going to three-ply it, I'm hoping for a sock, I mean, it'll probably be a sport weight, but it'll hopefully be socks, Yeah. sock weight, um, if I have enough yardage. That's the goal, anyway. I try not to set specifics, but I'm going to try for that. You're spinning it on the Manitana? I'm spinning it on the Hanson, yes. Um, I need to... My matchless is in my the master bedroom closet. I've got a, a walk-in closet, and it's underneath like my shirts and stuff that are hanging. And it's been there for six months. And I really need to take it out and give it a good cleaning and oiling and all that because yeah. I want to use it for tour de fleece. Yeah. Because oh. I can I can get a lot more done on the matchless. So anyway. Is the mini spinner? Yes, because the mini spinner is temperamental and if you don't have the tension just right on the um, flyer part, it'll overheat after a certain amount of time yeah. and shut itself down. And that irritates me. <laughs> That's been doing that a lot lately, too. Yeah, if you adjust, the, there's a little screw that um, has a latch that goes onto the back yeah. um, part. And if you adjust the tension tighter or looser, it usually helps. But, yeah, if you try to spin for several hours at a time, my mini spinner gives me crap about it. So I try to get up now and, like, go pick up eight things around the house and then go back to it. Yeah, a lot of people do what's called um, commercial cleaning. So every 15 to 20 minutes they get up and yeah. clean for two or three minutes or whatever, so. Yep, that sounds perfect. Um, I've been spinning as well. I um, have been spinning on one thing for a long time, for almost a month, which y'all haven't seen because it was on the Shock Dreams. And that is some Hello Yarn in the Dormant colorway. And it's Portuguese Merino, and it's spinning pretty fine. Um, it's a lot of, like, browns, rust, and olive green with some pink thrown in. And I bought a bag of ends. So this was a club colorway, and then um, Adrian did, like, a cleaning out of her studio. Mm -hmm. And it's just little bits, right. like, that much. And it was 12 ounces. So I have 12 ounces of this. I'm going to three-ply it. So I divided it into um, three lots of four ounces just randomly. And it's going to be a three-ply eventually. And then I might do, because that's not quite enough for a sweater. That's less than a pound. But there's that Caraba sweater that uses stripes as the main feature. So I might find some brown... Actually, I have some brown CVM in the stash, around 8 ounces, that I could spin for the stripes. So, I might need more than 8 ounces. I might use one of the fleeces, but um, I will use one of the fleeces. I need way more than 8 ounces. But, yep, so that's the first thing. I'm the shocked Reeves. And then the second thing I'm spinning is, um, so I proposed an owl for Harry Potter House Cup. <laughs> I don't think I've heard about this yet. Oh, really? And it is a spinning owl. Oh, and yeah, it's yeah. It's, there's a bunch of different scene. things you have to yes. do. Yeah. Yes. And this is an owl that I've failed at twice before because <laughs> I always, Shut up! Because I always do, like, too much. So the first time I tried to do it, I tried to do um, four pairs of socks. And, like, I chose some really pretty socks. But they were, like, beaded. Uh. And um, there was some cursing kapoors in there, which were gorgeous. And actually, I ended up finishing those. The Artemis and Athena, I think. And um, just a lot of pattern socks and 
I was not in the mindset at that point. And I wasn't probably a good enough knitter to do beaded socks. Because this had to be like three summers. I remember they were red. The yarn was the red. Beaded ones. Yeah. Yeah, it was, um, it was this yarn right here. Hello, or not hello yarn. Bomaza. Uh, Bomaza. In one of the club colorways. So anyway, club or loopy you spring fling colorway. Um, so that was a fail. And then the following summer, I was like, I'm going to do this again. It had to be three summers ago. Um, and I did like a pound of, you know, like way over shot, like, cause it's just four ounces of each is the minimum. Mm -hmm. So I was like a pound of each. So it would have been like four pounds and that was just dumb. And I did like one braid. <laughs> and so, um, and that's, part of the reason why I switched houses because I needed a change to just mm -hmm. move past. And then last summer I did the, I did a totally different owl and that's when I started doing the owls and that one was successful. That was the fleece washing. And then I did the fall spinning one, which was like two pounds. And then I did the detention one. And then, so I'm back at arithmetic, arithmetic, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it this time. Arithmetic. Yeah. I think that's yes. It. And, um, so this is, and they made the suggestion cause the owl overseer people are really smart and they're like, why don't you do the four ply and the three ply first, and then you'll just have the two ply and the one ply left. That's smart. You're so smart over there because you know, you get burned out. So anyway, I started my cable ply, which is a four ply. I've never cable plied before. So it's new to me. This is some Romney that I spun at yarn school or that I spun, that I dyed at yarn school. It was the first thing that we dyed in the crock pot. So it's like really intense where it was at the bottom. Yeah. And then lighter towards the top. So I have eight ounces of this. So this is the first two ounces. And then it got like really blue green towards the very bottom. So that's, I split it. So like the very blue green, I just pulled it in half. And then, so four ounces and four ounces, and they look like to two totally different braids. Mm -hmm. And then I split each of those in half. So two plies will be the light green and then the blue, and then I'll ply those together for, cable ply, for yeah. each, and then I'll ply them again for the four. So this is the first two ounces. I spun this while watching Hunt for Red October and uh, the birdcage. So <laughs> first two ounces are done. It's pretty thin. Um, which is what I want, because I don't want my four-ply to be super thick. Yeah. It's hard to see, but yeah, it's fairly thin. Um, and then I have three more bobbins to do, and then I'll apply that together. And I'm hoping to get it done before we leave to go to the loop of you. That would be the angle. Um, for... <laughs> I love that the Estes trip has now become the loop of you trip. <laughs> totally is. The loop of you is filled with wonderful things. Estes is wonderful, too. I so I hear that's the word on the street. Although some people have been telling me that it snows there. Yeah, Megan. Well, and Megan went one year and it like it was it rained and it was forty degrees. And then there was another year where it snowed. And then there was another so year where it was like seventies. So it's up in the mountains. I don't know how I'm gonna pack for this trip because <laughs> it's ninety here right now. Uh, it's been beautiful so. this weekend. So it's been in the like sixties and low seventies here. So I'm going to have to go, like, wash winter things, and I might bring a jacket. So I'll definitely bring a hand-knit sweater. How about that? Um, and then, yeah, that's it for me for spinning. So it'll get there. <laughs> I would really love to spin two pounds a month during Stash Dash, but we'll see if that's even somewhat achievable. You know how it would be more achievable is if you made it so that each ply got its own count for yardage. And then... How does that affect two pounds? That has no effect no, on No, but it gives you your yardage or your meterage. You're killing me here. Stop trying to mess with <laughs> Stash Dash. You and Jessica holding yarn doubled. I'm not asking to hold yarn doubled. That's Jess. Jess is a troublemaker. I'm just asking you to get <laughs> credit for what I'm doing. No, you get credit for the finish yarn. Do a lot of fold singles. I don't want to. Or uh, course fun. You're not the boss of me. I'm not, but I'm the boss of Stash Dash. <laughs> you are the empress, indeed. <laughs> so we do have a book to review. It's actually a magazine this week. Um, it is. We it ran into Shannon uh, with Cooperative Press at Maryland Sheep and Wool. And 
we talked to her about um, several different things. And the first was the her magazine, the Knit Edge magazine, which is um, its parent is Cooperative Press, so it's a, a subsidiary of Cooperative Press. And it's um, it comes, it's sort of like ply, but not for spinning, for more like knitting and crochet. In How would that, you say it's like ply? In that there are patterns, but that's not necessarily the meat of it. There's a lot okay. of really in-depth articles and um, uh, tutorials and things like that. So it's not just for patterns. Yep. And this is what the front cover looks like. Mm -hmm. Did you say that this was sent to us to review? I uh, didn't, but it was sent to us for review. It was, and it retails for a six ninety nine RAV download, and there's tons of subscription options mm -hmm. as well on the Knit Edge website, which is on the Cooperative Press page, I believe. Yeah, and we've linked everything in the show notes. You can get, if you do single issues, you can get a dollar off. If you do a year long, you get more off, etc. So you can check all those options out on their website. So the first article that I really, really liked is by Kate Atherley, mm -hmm. and she's got one called Wise Hilda on Socks, and it talks about three key measurements for measuring for socks, and not just measuring these on one foot, but measuring these on both feet, to make, because one foot can be different than another. So how to get good fit on socks, and she's actually writing a book that's coming out from Interweave mm -hmm. in um, August. August called Custom Socks Knit to your feet so yeah. this is a very something that she's extremely passionate about so um that's a really really interesting article um then there's an article about the nordic museum which is really interesting it's um a lot of like there's contemporary folk art crochet there's some really interesting stuff about that and it's by uh donna Ducranis. Drew Connus, I'm sorry I pronounced that incorrectly, who does a lot of different um, designing. You can check her stuff out on Ravelry on her designer page. Um, she's a very well-versed designer. Yep. The first pattern in the magazine is a reversible cable scarf. Mm -hmm. I can see this working well for both men and women. Yeah. So it'd be a good a great thing to get started to um, start like kick off Christmas knitting. I can see it being a great gift knit. Yeah, and so the cables are different on each side, but they're um, they're knit at the same time. So you can see the yeah, Laura's probably shows better. Yeah, so it's a different look on either side, but there is no wrong side to the knitting, which is nice. And it's it's sized differently. There's a small, medium, and large size, so 48 inches length all the way up to 72 inches length. Mm -hmm. The width stays eight inches on this. And it uses a Valley Yarns Amherst color, um, yarn, which is available from webs. Yeah. Um, there's also a couple of articles about the, um, about the hand-dyed yarn industry. And in particular, there's an introspective on Blue Moon Fiber Arts and Tina there. Um, and how, how they do what they do, how they deal with, uh, you know, seasonal colors and the changing market, etc., um, so, and a little bit about how she personally dyes her process. So it's very interesting if that's um, a topic that you're uh, curious about. Then there's a hat pattern, the miles to go, which I really, I, that's a cover pattern. And I think it's mm -hmm. my favorite pattern in the magazine. It uses a gradient yarn. Yeah. It uses knit circus yarn. And the designer is actually the owner of knit circus yarn. Jala so Spiro. Yeah, it's really, really, and, and and she does the Knit Circus podcast with Amy Detchen, mm -hmm. uh, which is a really interesting podcast for sure. Um, it is one size. It says it stretches to fit 18 to 23 inches. There are very clear charts, not on that one, but on the, because um, it does Reversible doesn't need, scarf. Yeah, but on the reversible scarf, there were very clear charts. Um, so... Yeah, I really like the next one, too. Um, I didn't quite get what was going on at Slope. In the in this photograph, I was like, is it part of the jacket? What's going on? Mm, I can see that. But, um, because I'm, I'm very literal in interpretation <laughs> of pictures. But when it's laid out, so it is a cowl. Mm -hmm. But it uses short rows in a really interesting way to make one side 
bigger than the other. Right. So if you don't like a lot of bulk around your neck and you want it more for decoration, you can move that bulky part to the bottom. If you want a lot of warmth around your neck, you can move it to the top. Yeah, I can so, also see really it being useful for when you double it up to oh, yeah. have it higher. It might be like over your nose versus um, it being one size around. I can see that being useful. And then the next pattern is gradient. Um, G-R-E-Y. Yeah, which is a clever um, spelling. I'm trying to get to a good picture to show you. It's very punny. Um, it is uh, sort of a very open work lace. Oh, Laura's got it. There we go. Um, with a very simple and clear chart. And the advantage of uh, digital publication is that you can zoom it in if you need a yep. bigger chart. Um, you can also make markings on it if you need to and remove them. This uses fingering weight yarn, mm -hmm. yeah, a gradient, and size four needles. And it's one size fits all so it you can add more repeats though and if you want it to be higher up so really cute there also is a feature in um, the top corner of each pattern that tells you required skills yes which i really really like unless you know what you're getting into yep without having to read the whole pattern which is useful uh, they also do crochet patterns um, which a lot of magazines tend not to integrate it's either one or the other uh, this is the Phoenix Flames cowl. So it's uh, sort of a shrug, stole, cowl combo. You can wear it over your shoulders or up around your neck. It's a ton of different um, sizes from a small all the way up to 2X. Mm -hmm. And it uses an interesting yarn. It uses Lantern Moon BFL fingering weight. So it's not like a simple... Um, like merino blend. It uses right. some interesting yarn, which I always appreciate. Yeah, there's also a pair of mitts. These are the Woodworkers Mitts by Christina Bowers. And it looks like it's a simple cable with a sort of herringbone-ish texture to the side of the cable. It has um, one size uh, listed, but it does give you information about adjusting the size um, if you need something different and it uses Madeline Tosh DK so there you go. single skein I have some Mad Tosh DK single skeins that I need do you so do you really I'm addicted to web scrap bags <laughs> shush um so anyway and then there's, I'm going to totally butcher this, Anna Dalvi, who does amazing shawls. Yeah, like, she's very... have reviewed her books before on the mm -hmm. podcast. She does amazing work. Has a shawl in here. And you actually knit the edging first and then pick up and work short, short rows for the body of the shawl. And it's just a very clever construction. It looks, it's B-Y-G-G-V-I-R. I think it's Big Veer shawl. It's... It's Old Norse. Yeah. It's the Old Norse word for barley. And it does have a very cool construction. Like Laura said, it's the edging is knitted sideways and it's knitted first. And then you pick up along the one edge and do short rows to decrease it. Yep. And it comes in three different sizes, which is unusual for shawls. So mm -hmm. that's really nice as well. And I think that is it. There's a couple more articles, like a visit to Peru. Mm -hmm. Um... And they do reference some other some of their other publications when it comes to relevant patterns. So if you if there's a pattern on socks, then they'll after that they'll show you a an advertisement for an, a, maybe one of their books that has to do with socks. So if it's yeah. something that you're interested in, they make it very easy for you to find other resources. For sure. So that is the Knit Edge magazine. And really, if you liked one of those patterns, it's probably worth it. It's six ninety nine Ravelry download. So you're getting seven patterns yeah. for seven dollars plus a whole bunch of articles. So very, very cool. Thank you people from Cooperative Press, especially Shannon for sending that our way. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a question to answer. So this is from Al Marie Kraft and she says, I'm still watching all the old episodes, so I'm not sure if I will come across this answer, but how long slash how many braids did it take you to get your spinning to a consistent thickness? <laughs> Are there beginning fibers that are less expensive that you would recommend? Not sure if I have time to dedicate to get good, but love the idea of spinning. Both your spinning works are always all so beautiful. So thank you. That, that is was very sweet. 
compliment. And I will say that the camera must smooth things out. <laughs> because how many braids does it take you to get to a consistent thickness? I'm still not at a consistent thickness. It just, yeah, it depends on the fiber and stuff too. Um, I will tell you the thing that helps me probably the most about becoming more consistent with my fiber was spinning 15 minutes a day for the first tour de fleece that I participated in. My only goal was to spin 15 minutes a day and putting that time in really helped me grow as a spinner. Um, but just putting time in, it's not necessarily a braid number. My friend Joanne borrowed my sidekick. She had never spun on a wheel before and she came back with this gorgeous yarn. That was her first that yarn? That was her first yarn! <laughs> That's just not fair. Now she has been spindle spinning for a while, but still. So, um, yeah, and she put it on Instagram and it was gorgeous. Yeah. Um, so, and I will tell you with the fiber she used, I gave her a braid of Leading Men Fiber Arts and their BFL base. Mm -hmm. Um, I would go with a BFL or a Coredale as a beginner because they've got a little bit of grabbiness to them. So they're not slick and super fine, but also the staple length is a little bit thicker, uh, thicker, a little bit longer. So it allows you to add twist without it getting kind of pulled out of your hands. Does that I make would, sense? Yes. And I would avoid anything shiny. So if you're just starting, I would avoid silk. Yeah. I would avoid tinsel. I would avoid bamboo, milk fibers. All of those are going to make Both it slicker. Cashmere. Yeah. Um, so it'll make it more difficult for you to get twist into it before it pulls it onto the bobbin. Um, like Laura mentioned, I would use a low fine or a medium fiber to start, like BFL, Cordell, um, Falkland, Shetland, Romney, something like that where it's got a little bit of grab at least. And a staple length that's a good size. Right, right. Um, I would not start with a superwash fiber. I would start I would with say... a natural fiber. Yeah, um, I would say that when you do use a longer staple fiber, though, keep that in mind because when I teach beginning spinning classes, one of the things, one of the problems that a lot of beginner spinners have is they're trying to draft like this. Mm. And when you're trying to pull on the same, fi so here's some Romney. So, um, which just happens to be sitting, y'all don't want to see my desk. <laughs> so if I'm pulling like this, in that same staple length, yes. nothing's going to move. But when I have a longer chunk and I move my hands apart, I can easily draft it out. Yeah. So that's a mistake a lot of beginners make is they're trying to draft within the same staple length. So just keep that in mind and don't let that frustrate you. Sometimes the best thing to do is move your hands further apart. So and I could be completely wrong in this, but I vaguely remember from a JC Boggs class that the length of the staple, let's say the staple is three inches, uh -huh. should be the distance between your front and back hand when you're drafting. You want it a little bit further because if you're, if it's three inches exactly. Well, but the fibers aren't all going to be start and end at the same place, right? They're going to yeah. be sort of mixed in. That's true. Or maybe that's, that, maybe that was intended as a starting point. Could be. Like at least. I don't know. I have I really know. terrible problem retaining information. If you're looking, one of the things that JC Boggs said when we did take the class from her um, was, and we took, um, was it the woolen or worsted class? Something like that. Um, we took big and loft yarn for sure. Mm -hmm. But one of the other ones we took was different drafting styles. And she said, most people are more consistent with a short forward draw versus a short backward draw. Right. That's true. So that's also something to think about as well. Um, but anyway, it just takes practice, just like anything else. I tell my kids, you don't become a good reader overnight. You have to practice and practice reading. And it's the same with any crafts or anything that you're going to do, yeah. including sports. So we have that discussion at school all the time. Um, so just practice. So under favorite things, we have the Three Waters Farm knit along slash spin along the spinning portion will start june the first you have until the end of may so just a few more days so pre-order the fiber if you want yes and then um the orders will be shipped the first week of june so we'll start june first and um then the yarn will start and really once you get your stuff we're pretty laid back yeah. about after june the first once you get your stuff go for it um, and you'll have three months to get it done. So August. Yeah. 
the end of August, August uh, 30... yep. 31st. 31st, yeah. Last day of August. So that will be the um, when the FOs will be doing the thread mm -hmm. for all the awesome prizes we have. And Three Waters Farms is donating some prizes, and Leslie and I are going to go through yep. some things and donate some prizes. So there is a lot to be driven for and you can also use that to double dip for stash dash i feel like we've spoken enough about stash yes. dash there is a link to... <laughs> no i mean we have mentioned it before you can talk about stash dash all you like it has taken over our group so <laughs> it's kind of taken over my life <laughs> so the thousand posts i have almost a hundred of them which is cray cray um i totally blame cray cray on cali by the way of dramatic knits so that's where i've her. i heard it first yeah um so there is a link in the show notes to stash dash there i updated the faqs so there's lots more information of what people have asked in the past um also i did a little entry on what was it on um how to measure for like how to weigh your stuff to figure out how many yards. So that's post three in that thread. And all the finish line threads have been opened. So feel free once you pick your one to post in that one. But you can wait until the last day. Oh yeah. To post in there. So don't feel pressured to pick one now. No, definitely not. Um, yeah, I'd rather you wait and post, you know, versus anyway. <laughs> versus lots of placeholders. Laura's <laughs> getting very like personally invested in the well-being <laughs> stash dash. I always am. It always becomes like major thing stress. for me. It's not even a. I don't think it's stress. It might be a just stress. getting it kicked off can be <laughs> stressful. I think some of the more interesting questions that cause me to think <laughs> always are interesting. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we have some events coming on mm -hmm. in the future. We will. I'll be attending Vicksburg in three days. Yes, our friend Renee Nitwiskers is coming. Yeah, uh, she is, and she's coming in Thursday. And I'm calling out sick on Friday. My boss knows already, so it's not a shock. That's why I can say it on the podcast. <laughs> um, and then actually, he scheduled the meeting for me at Friday at like one thirty, and I was like, <laughs> you know, I'm leaving. Um, so I have to go meet with him tomorrow. End of year meeting, super fun. Hmm. Not at all stressful. Um, so he's doing it with everyone. It's not like I'm. In oh trouble. yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I could be in trouble. I don't know. Then I think of all the ways I could be in trouble. <laughs> um, welcome to my mind of psychosis. Neuroses, yeah. Yeah. Um. So, <laughs> uh, Vicksburg's on Friday. That's gonna be super fun. I'm teaching three classes. And then um, Renee's sticking around till Sunday night. She flies out Sunday night. And then Wednesday, the following Wednesday, we leave. It's what? that fast. I think it's that following. Maybe no, it's, it's not. Don't freak me Wednesday, out. Wednesday after then. Weezy told me it was the following Wednesday. And then he freaked me out. And then I think it's the next Wednesday. Yeah, we leave on like the 17th, right? No, it's like the 10th. Really? Crap. <laughs> I should probably look that up. Yeah, we probably should. Uh, I think it's the 10th. It might be the 7th. I think it's the 17th because your class is on the 18th or the 16th. I feel like you're wrong. If it is, you booked me a flight really, really early. Hold on. Now I have to see. Crap. Now we're just wasting time. I'm sorry, you guys, but I'm pretty sure that it's not until the third week. If I just show up at... Uh... So my flight that you got me... That leaves at 4 a.m. <laughs> My father was like, I didn't think flights left that early. Oh, it is June 10th. It's June 10th. So when is Estes? <laughs> God, I hope I didn't book the week. You better not have. Um, I'm looking. Oh, God. Southwest Welcome to, to how fancy we are. <laughs> but Southwest, we can change it, though, if we need to. Yeah, but estes will market their their website sucks probably you're it's in part... charge of the estes website <laughs> i would like to speak with you <laughs> it's part of the national parks website i think still though you would think that it's an event they would have their own they have lots of events events calendar june i'm looking 
I'm like on pins and needles now. I'm looking, dude. Oh, I don't care about 2016. I want to see June. God, I hope I didn't book the wrong thing. <laughs> um, jazz. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. The Why wolf. are you messing with my mind? <laughs> now I have to double check the loop. No, I'm sure. Lynn's on the ball with the loop. Yeah, Lynn's on the ball there. Yeah, the wool market is June 13th and 14th. So your class at the loopy, we were wrong when we talked about this last week. Your class at the loopy is on the 11th. I don't think we said dates. So. I think we did. I didn't say dates. Well, the, I didn't know them. the loopy you site would have the right date. So, yes. all right. And then we're going to <laughs> now that that's figured out. We are such a hot mess. <laughs> At least I have the end of school year and stash dash chaos to. Dude, I have stuff. I'm just not going to bore you with the details <laughs> of the stuff. Uh, Nobody wants to hear about that. All right. So six eleven. Yes. <laughs> we are so ridiculous. But now that 20 minutes have gone by, um, anyway, uh, and we're going to Estes, and we're, we'll be there Saturday and Sunday. Yep. So, and that's this group is kind of quiet on Ravelry, too. So I imagine I it'll kick up, there. you know, yeah. a week or two before. I need to post in there and say, hey, I'm an Estes first-timer. What's, what's the deal? <laughs> Bring layers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. I think that's it. What else do we have to talk about? Anything else? I don't think so. No. You know what? Sign ups for that spinning competition are going to be soon. Spinzilla? Mm hmm. Yeah, I think they're in July. Okay. And then the um, actual event is in October. So um, we'll talk about that when we know dates for sure. So, but I imagine it's in July or August. Yeah, I was just thinking about it because we'll go see. Fancy Tigers trophies when we go. We need a picture of us being all sad. There you go. <laughs> all right. I think that's it for this week. And yes. I'm going to my parents' house for a barbecue. So that is fancy. Mm. And I will talk to you later. Y'all yeah. have a good week. Bye, Bye y'all. Yeah.